And if you give a totally invalid hint, you get this wonderful piece of information. You get nothing. Hints. I saw your video where you use a use hash hint, but the query does not use a hash join. And it's true, if there's a video out there, I show that there's a use hash hint, and yet the database still doesn't merge join, and we dig into why the optimizer does that. You explain why, but how do I get that information? Good enough to have someone on the video go, oh yes, this is why. I need to be able to understand this myself. And that's a very valid point. Before 19C, if you're trying to work out how the optimizer is dealing with hints, the simpler way of explaining that is it's hard. And we'll, we'll come back to looking at how you can get a little bit of information, but it's hard. Another reason to go to 19C is we've dramatically improved the way we can report back to you as a developer or DBA, the way we're digesting the hints you put in your SQL queries. So I've got my table here called scott.emp. I'm sure everyone's familiar with this scott.employee table. And just to show there's no smoke and mirrors here, I do indeed have an index called emp. PK. We're going to refer to that in some examples coming up here. Now, I'm not using any hints in this first SQL. I'm just doing this to explain one of the cool things you can do with any SQL statement in the Oracle database is once you've run it, you can run select star from dbmsxplan.displayCursor. And it shows you the plan that was used for the previously executed SQL statement. You get all the normal stuff. The predicate information I'm not interested in, so we're going to strip that out in following examples. But the key thing is here is we get the SQL statement and we get the plan. We're now going to start throwing some hints in here and actually see what the actual database does with those hints using a cool piece of tech that came in 19C. So let's start with the obvious one. Let's start with a totally false fictional hint. I wish it was a real one, the go faster hint, but there is no such hint. That's obviously an incorrect hint. I run that and then I run this. I've changed display cursor to remove the predicate. I'm not interested in that. And I'm adding this thing called the hint report. So I get the normal plan, but now I get this thing at the bottom called the hint report. And this is cool. It says E means an error. And the ones in error were select statement number one, which is this one here. There was an error in the hint called go faster on line one. So that's pretty cool. Straight away, we get this really useful information saying, yes, that hint was in error. There's no such hint. So straight away, I know that go faster, bad hint. Let's use something else. How about the use hash hint? We know that's valid, right? Same problem. Use hash is a valid hint, but I haven't phrased it correctly. Use hash requires some brackets around it and a target of the use hash hint. So it says, yep, you've got a syntax error in your use hash hint, E for error. So once again, another example, but probably a more realistic example of where we might go wrong. How about this one? I'm doing select full on the employee table, scott.me equals 10. I use the employee hint. I have a dash here, it simply means there's no status, it wasn't an error. And yes, I actually did use your hint called full on the employee table. It is a valid hint, scott.m and the employee table in there. A valid hint and it was used. How about this one? This one's an interesting one. If I do full scott.emp from scott.emp, if we look at the syntax uh, inside the documentation, we'll see that that's actually an invalid hint. We're actually doing full on. That is not accepted. You can't use the schema name inside the hint. And we get this. What's quite interesting is we get no hint report whatsoever. That's an interesting one. I think we should actually get some sort of report that it wasn't used or it's invalid. I'll take that up with the optimizer team, but that's one I discovered today that it doesn't seem to report anything. That's perhaps an oversight. Let's look at this one. I want to use an index on the employee table. And this one says, yes, once again, it's valid. I use the index on the employee table. There's no errors, or no flags there. It says, yep, I used it. So, so far I've had the obvious ones where it's invalid and the ones where the hint is actually used but it's even better than that. Let's look at this one. I'm saying use the index on the employee table from scott.emp and it says, uh-uh, it was unresolved. Why? Let's look at my query. I'm doing select index on the employee table, but I gave the employee table an alias. If I use an alias, I have to use that inside the hint. So this is saying this hint was unresolved. I couldn't find something called EMP in this hint. I get a flag of N. Not only is it syntax errors, it actually is things like this, where the hint 
didn't make sense in the context of the query as was written. How about this one? I want to use the employee primary key index. Same problem because the employee table is aliased of E, MPK doesn't work. I would need to have an E in there followed by MPK. So it's unresolved. How about the one I talked about in a previous video? This is the one where I've said, I want to use a hash join into the table called D. But when I look at the table, it's I did a merge join. Why is that? It says this hint was unused. U is unused. I didn't actually use the hash join hint. Now the subject that is that for another video, but that is hash join into D only makes sense if I didn't start with D. In this case, I started with D, so using a hash doesn't make any sense. If I add the leading hint, which says start with employee and then hash join into D, I get my hash join as I wanted and it tells me, yep, I used on line one, I used the leading hint to go into the hash join and I use D as the target of the hash join on line three. You can see there's some really cool stuff here. It's telling you where they were used, where they're in error, where they couldn't be resolved, where they were unused. That's pretty cool. And for example, even this one, it's the same example. Start with the employee table, hash join into D. Oh, but also use a nested loop. Doesn't make any sense. And I get that information. Yes, I use the leading hint. Yes, I use the hash join hint, but the use nested loop hint was unused in this case. So it actually digs down on a hint by hint basis. And we can make interesting discoveries as well. Like what if I have a logical contradiction? I'm saying down in the inline view, the query block name is X, I wanna use a full table scan. But up here I've said in the query block name called X, which is this query in here, use an index. So I've got index versus full. And it's, we make this interesting discovery. We actually did a unique scan. So we actually used the index hint and it looks like a hint on the outer overrides the inner. And it actually says hint overridden by another in the parent query block. So not only do we get some good hint reporting, we actually make an interesting discovery here. Hints in the outer block will override those in the inner block. If you don't have 19C, then the only thing you really can do is dig around in the 10053 trace. And it's nowhere near as good as that because this is the kind of things you would see if you're running this on say 12.1, 12.2 or 18. Here's the example of the use hash. You have to dig around in the trace in the dumping hints section. And it looks like this. It says errors zero, resolved one, used one. Zero means okay, one means not okay. So it says there were no errors, but I couldn't resolve it and I didn't use it. The use hash hint. In this one, same thing. It's a valid hint, but I couldn't resolve it. I couldn't use it because there is no index called PK in this. It's emp underscore PK. And if you give a totally invalid hint, you get this wonderful piece of information. You get nothing. So that's hint reporting. Some very, very cool stuff.